Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we're going over Louis Trehart. Louis Johannes Trehart, which is Swedish for garden, was a farmer from the eastern frontier of the Cape Colony and became one of the first leaders of the Fuertrakkers. In 1834 he immigrated to live among the Corsa beyond the native reserve frontier because he did not want to live under the colonial authority. He later crossed the Orange River into the Northern Territory and forged northwards with Johannes Hans van Rensburg in early 1836. His immigrant party consisted of seven boot farmers, their wives and 34 children and their indigenous servants and forged into uncharted interior of the Southern Africa and settled for a year at the base of the Zoutspannersberg. Unhealthy conditions made both men and animals sick at this point and Trechart abandoned the settlement when a follow-up trek did not materialize. With no buyers for his ivory and supplies running low, Trechart headed southeastwards to the Portuguese outpost of Dalgoa Bay that would become Maputo, the capital of Mozambique. The oceanward route was difficult and included crossing the northern Drakensberg and by the time they reached Dalgoa Bay, Trechart's wife along with a number of the party had contracted malaria. Trechart's wife died at the fort in May 1838, followed by Trechart six months later. At the colony Louis had three siblings of which he was the youngest. Pietrus Trechart, his grandfather, was a Calvinist refugee from Bakabo Akalmo, southern Sweden, who came to the Cape at the age of 19 in 1731 and married a daughter of the German Extian family. His father Karl was born in Franschuk and moved to Eitenacher after his birth and then to Graf Renet. Karl was a civilian officer and was much involved in the 18th century Corsa conflicts and participated in the Graf Renet resistance movements first against the Dutch East India Company in 1795 and then the English colonial governance. When Bresla was installed as the Landrost in Graf Renet, Karl and his two sons settled beyond the Great Fish River, outside the colony, vowing not to be aligned with their new government. When the Dutch governance was restored in 1803, Karl returned. Louis' writings revealed a sound intellect and an above-average literacy compared to his countrymen. He was a farmer in Graf Renet and settled in Eitenacher in 1810 and later that year he married Martha when she was 15 years old. Louis moved to Bosberg farm near Brankieshoogte which was expropriated in 1814. He acquired a Deplat farm at Dagaboersnack where he was appointed as field corner for Smaldiel Ward in 1825. The Northwood Trek Trechard coordinated his movements with those of his friend Hendrik Portgitter, who was to follow his trail. Trechard started the northward track with eight families besides his own and was joined by the track of Johannes Hans van Rensburg, another farmer living in exile. Trechard and van Rensburg were the first of the Voortrakkers to pass near Taba and Chu, where the Borolong tribe of Chief Moroka II was resident. Upon reaching the Strait Poort Berg in the current Limpopo province, Trechart and Van Rensburg parted ways after Trechart argued that Van Rensburg was expending his ammunition excessively in his pursuit of ivory. Van Rensburg would not be seen again. He and his trek of 49 persons were killed in June 1836 by a troop of Tsonga at a ford in the Limpopo River. After a night-long assault, Trechard sojourned at the salt pan of Soutpansberg Western Promontory from May to August 1836, where he was visited by Potgieter's scouting party, who assured him that they would soon catch up and join his trek. Potgieter departed northwards in an unsuccessful search of Van Rensburg. In July, Trechard took upon the search in an easterly direction and searched Sakana's kraal on the Limpopo, where the Van Rensburg clan were likely decimated. Here, a premonition of danger and treachery caused Trechard to return homeward, all but convinced of Van Rensburg's fate. In November 1836, Trechard moved his camp eastwards 
to more agreeable climes in the vicinity of the later Skumansdal and Louis Trichard town, a quarter known to the local tribes as Zanani. His party was to stay there until June 1837, in which time they built rudimentary houses, a workshop and a school for the 21 children. Here Trechat is said to have intervened in a succession struggle between the sons of the late chief Mpofu. Trechat would have assisted his son Rasetau, i.e. Ramabulana, in retaking the chieftainship from his younger brother Ramavoya. Trechat's account of this incident was however torn from his diary at an unknown time. For this assistance and for the protection against Matabele raiding parties, Rase Tao evidently gave Trechat freedom to occupy land and access to hunting grounds. Pothita's track, delayed by conflicts in the south, was however not forthcoming. From June to August 1837, Trechat's party camped eastwards at the Duran Rafid, current Duran River farm, whereafter they departed from the Zoutspanberg to find a new home or trading route to the sea. Their limited communications with the Portuguese indicated that they would be welcomed and that the east coast was sparsely populated. The journey to Dalgoa Bay Trechard decided on a southerly approach to Dalgoa Bay, avoiding the Limpopo where the Van Rensburgs were murdered and the Tetse Fly Endemic to the low regions. Trechard arrived at the Olifants Rafil via Tunis Puert on the 2nd of October 1837 and consulted Chief Sequati of the Peri people about a way forward. Chief Sequati paid them a friendly visit and advised that the eastward route was everywhere obstructed by impassable mountains, lest they would leave their wagons behind and proceed on foot. Trechart, now aged 54, was however resolute in crossing the mountains even if the wagons had to be dismantled and transported piecewise. They undertook their own reconnaissance of the increasingly rugged slopes fringing the olifants and found a possible slope leading to the summit. After crisscrossing the olifants a number of times, the wagons, at times partially dismantled and hauled on branches, were taken over the crest of the Drakensberg in a feat taking two and a half months. They soon encountered local inhabitants. By day they were presented with pots of marula beer by the Sekororo tribe, but at night the tribe members would repeatedly rustle their cattle. Trechart, at a loss to recover these losses, resorted to taking a number of tribe members hostage to prevent further wrongdoing. The final 200 mile stage of the trek to Dalgoa Bay commenced on the 5th of February 1838 and the Olifants River was soon forded a 14th and last time. Here the subjects of the Sekororo in Duna, Ngochipana, came to apologize and managed to secure the release of four women hostages by presenting Trachart with two large elephant tusks. The tribes beyond the Blader River assured Trachart of their good intentions and the old chieftainess Mosali asked Trechart to arbitrate in a quarrel with her rival Magupe. A local tribe also assisted the trek in navigating a region set with numerous trapping pits. The Klaseri and sand rivers were forded in succession and the region now known as the Central Kruger Park was traversed without incident. East of the Lebombo range they encountered different villages of the Gwamba people. All their inhabitants were friendly they and their chief Mako Delana presented Trechart with a number of gifts. They reached the Kamati River two months into the Lovau trek. It proved difficult to ford and a number of the animals were lost or stolen while crossing. They passed the Villa Luisa outpost and continued along swamps, lagoons and the villages of coastal tribes to reach the fort at Dalgoa Bay on the 13th of April 1838. Dissolution of the track. The party of 52 persons received a friendly reception from the Portuguese. What had the appearance of a new beginning would however spell the gloomy end of the track as a coordinated movement. Four days after their arrival, five persons fell ill with fever. The school teacher, Fefa, and Trechart's wife Martha 
were first to perish from the malaria. More persons took ill, though some of Trechard's children recovered. The climate and grazing at the fort was found to be unfavourable for a long stay, and Trechard dispatched a servant to Natal to request an evacuation by sea. Meanwhile, his son Carwellis departed by ship northwards to investigate Madagascar and East Africa for possible settlement. Before his return, Trechard succumbed to malaria six months after his wife. Only by the winter of the next year, 1839, were the 26 survivors transported by the Mazepa schooner to Port Natal. Legacy and Recognition He was the only fur tracker leader to keep a diary of his trek, a valuable document in terms of linguistics and ethnology. Besides his observations on the weather patterns, geography and the wildlife of the interior, the diary was commenced in July 1836 at the Zoutspanberg and concluded in May 1838 at Dalgoa Bay. Entries were added almost daily and seldom more than two days after the events he described. The document was not written for publication or effect, but rather details his personal reflections on the social interactions and day-to-day -day experience of his small community. In 1917, Preller's version of it was the first to appear in print, followed by T. H. LaRue's more reliable text in 1964 that was supplied with a glossary and linguistic annotations. J. Grobler's annotated translation to Afrikaans appeared in 2013, which significantly improves the accessibility of the text. The town of Trichardsdorp was named after him in 1899 commemorating his year-long stay at the base of the Zoutspansberg. In Mpumalanga, a town named Trichard was situated along his northward route. Several memorials trace his route. The first at Winburg, where one column of the Furtracker monument symbolizes Trichard's party. Near Zebedelia, a route marker is present beside the R519 road, just north of Straitpoort Mountains which itself recalls Trichard's disagreement with Van Rensburg. In the towns of Louis Trichard, a memorial commemorates the school they built, and a bust of Trichard is displayed on the municipal library. In 1937, the Trek Centenary, a bronze plaque was installed where they crossed the Drakensberg Ridge. A sundial beside Nelspreet's modern town hall is shaped like a wagon wheel in recognition of his journey. The Louis Trichard Trek Memorial Garden is located at the final destination of his trek in Maputo. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to hit the like button and please be friendly with the subscribe button and the notification bell and YouTube will let you know as soon as we drop our next video. Stay safe and stay strong.